So the first thing I need to do to set this up is to charge it. Now on the X431, the port is right here and I have fully charged this tablet and it should be ready to go. Now there are three buttons on the side. The top one and the second one control the volume. The one that we want is the very last one. If I click and hold it, it's gonna turn on the scanner. Here we go. Now, if you're familiar with Android, the setup is gonna be fairly easy because it is an Android interface. I'm gonna slide up to unlock it. Now, the software automatically starts, the X431 software. So at some point, it's gonna kick on. But the very first thing we need to do, so this is brand new, we need to connect that to the internet. So I'm gonna go to the settings menu. Ah, there it is. There's the software starting up X431. Now, if this happens and you were in the middle of doing something, not a problem. On the bottom, we can return to the first screen by pressing this little circle and we're back on the first screen. So I'm going to go to settings. Then I'm going to go to the Wi-Fi. Now that I'm in the Wi-Fi setup, I'm going to scan for local networks and I'm going to connect to them. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to say, let's connect to this guy right here. And at this point, I'll enter my password right here. After the password has been entered, I'm going to click connect. And we are now connected to the Wi-Fi. Again, I can return to the main menu by pressing this little circle. And I can return to the X431 software to complete the setup. Now, you may be presented with this screen. If it tells you to update, definitely go ahead and hit the update. And this is updating the app, which I always think is a good thing to update the app before we start to do anything with it. Now the app has been preloaded on this tablet. It's not like you can go and get this app off the normal Google store. So if you happen to blank out this thing, you will lose the app. But Launch does provide you the ability to re-download it off their website if you have the right credentials. Okay, so now it's continuing the installation process. Now you may be prompted with this. If you are prompted with this, I'm gonna hit settings and I'm gonna click on here, allow from this source because we know this is a legitimate source and I'm gonna hit install. Okay, now it's done installing. I'm gonna hit open. And now that we're back on the app, we can hit login. And at this point, we have to select new registration because we are new to this setup. And I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to select a username, a password, and I'm going to enter the email. Then I move to the bottom and I'm going to select my country. And then I'm going to fill in this to prove that I am not a machine. And now that I enter this to prove that I am a human, I'm going to hit register. And now we're at the activation screen. And this is probably the one where you want to be really careful on because we're going to enter the serial number and activation code. Now you get this little piece of paper that contains both of them. And this is what you're paying the big money for. You get a serial number. And once I throw open this little paper behind it, there is an activation code. I'm going to take that number. I'm going to enter the serial number up here. Then I'm going to enter the activation here and then I'm going to finally touch activate. Now, remember, this information is confidential. If for some reason you were to share your activation code, you're basically giving away the product that you just bought. And I would also recommend being careful when opening up this little paper. I tear off the corners, being very careful that I don't tear into the actual paper, damaging the number and me not being able to read it. Now, Launch also recommends to inspect it and make sure that there is no sign of tampering or any evidence that somebody took a peek inside at the number. Because if they did, that means that somebody has your activation code. So at that point, you want to contact Launch immediately. And assuming that you enter a valid activation number, you will be presented with the screen showing that you have successfully activated. I'm going to hit OK. And you might be presented with an option to update the software. I'm going to hit update immediately. Finally, we are now presented with the main download screen. This download screen shows all the core modules that are available to update for the software and all the different modules for the different car brands. So I'm going to hit update. And as you can see, there is a ton of software that is being downloaded, which is great. This is an indication that Launch is constantly updating and releasing new modules, new capabilities, new features, new car models. And I'll scroll down so you can see all the cars that are supported on here.
Now remember these scanners do come with a certain number of years of updates depending on the package that you got. So my recommendation would be to make sure that you always keep your scanner updated at least right up to the day before you're about to expire. That is if you don't intend on renewing the support for this scanner. And most shops, environments, since they're gonna be dealing, dealing with a lot of different car brands, it would make sense to be subscribed to constant updates. Well, for the do-it-yourself people like myself, who are probably not gonna deal with all these different brands, I think the amount of years of support that you get with this scanner when you buy it is more than enough. And you got a lot of stuff on here. You got things that are made in the US, you got things that are made overseas. I, there's some brands in here that I have not even heard of. So this is definitely very, very capable. This is what we call an OBD bi-directional scanner. So it not only pulls codes from the car and allow us to diagnose the car, it also pulls live data so we know exactly what is going on in the car real time. But because it's bi-directional and this is why it costs more than a normal scanner, it can send commands back to the car and can activate things like sensors, solenoids, and things that normally will require mechanics to go down into a car and manually apply power to or remove to test manually. We can do a lot more with this too because it's bi-directional. So this, you can think of this as an OBD2 scanner on steroids. <laughs> and look at this, it just keeps on going. Now, is there any cases where it would not make sense to even download the software or update the software and all every single module? Should you selectively only update a few models that you know you're going to work on? If you own a Mitsubishi, does it make sense just to download the Mitsubishi module and any of the core modules? Well, it kind of does, especially if you happen to bought one of the scanners that do not have expandable memory. This particular X431 V, V4.0, does have expandable memory, so there is quite a bit of room where there is no concern about space. But technically, if you were very limited on memory, it's just like your phone. You could be selective about what exactly you update or which ones you don't, don't even bother downloading because you know you are never gonna use. Also, at this point, I can leave the tablet alone and it will continue to update the files and I don't have to do anything. At this point, I am fully complete and done with the registration process. Now, if you guys did enjoy these videos, I do and plan to make more videos for the X431 in greater detail. So if yeah, that is the kind of stuff that you guys are interested on, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this. And if you found any part of this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.